Anatomy 32, Chapter 24, The Digestive System, Topics, Overview of the System, and Peritoneum. So here is uh, the digestive system structures, most of them found in the abdominal pelvic cavity. So the uh, digestive system includes the gastrointestinal tract, or GI tract, that goes from the mouth to the anus, so mouth and oral cavity, to the pharynx, to the esophagus, to the stomach, to the small intestine, to the large intestine, and out the anus. And the pharynx is a shared structure shared with the respiratory system. There are also many important accessory digestive organs, including many in the oral cavity, including salivary glands, uh, the tongue, the teeth, and then down in the abdominal cavity, we have the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, all important accessory structures. Functions of the digestive system includes ingestion, that's putting the food into your mouth, ingest it. Secretion, secretion is the release of various uh, solutions, substances. Um, a lot of times uh, things like uh, saliva, uh, gastric juice, pancreatic juice, um, can be acidic, could have buffers in it, could have enzymes, so electrolytes. Then there's mixing and propulsion, the churning and moving the food along the GI tract. Digestion. Digestion is either mechanical and or chemical. Mechanical breakdown of food is making it from big pieces to small pieces. And chemical digestion is taking big molecules like proteins and breaking them down into small molecules uh, such as amino acids. Absorption. Absorption is the passage of the digested nutrients from the GI tract into the bloodstream or lymphatic system. And then defecation. Defecation is elimination of the feces, elimination of what was not digested or absorbed, and also bacteria, because there are a lot of bacteria living in the large intestine. However, you do not find uh, much, if any, cellular waste in the feces. All right, the peritoneum. The peritoneum is the largest of the serous membranes. It is found in the abdominal cavity and has a variety of functions. It does, like all serous membranes do, help to reduce friction and provide lubrication for structures that are moving around in the body. So in this case, uh, stomach, intestines, they are moving during wall materials are moving along them and they're rubbing up against surrounding structures. And so the peritoneum is able to reduce the friction they experience, preventing them from suffering damage. Peritoneum also has some additional functions. It attaches organs to each other and also attaches organs to the abdominal walls, thereby helping to hold the organs in place. And um, parts of it include adipose or fatty tissue, and that can help to protect abdominal organs from impacts. Um, organs that are surrounded by the peritoneum are referred to as intraperitoneal organs. Organs that are not surrounded by the peritoneum are called retroperitoneal organs. The peritoneum has five parts or folds. The first fold is the greater omentum, Greater omentum drapes over the um, small intestines, kind of like a fatty apron, and it is uh, the most anterior fold of the peritoneum, and it includes a significant amount of adipose tissue, which gives it the ability to help cushion the underlying organs from impacts. The falciform ligament is a structure that comes off of the liver, and helps to connect the liver to the anterior abdominal wall. The lesser omentum suspends the stomach and duodenum from the liver. So the lesser omentum is connecting the stomach and duodenum to the liver. The mesentery, mesentery is a larger structure that helps to bind and connect the 
uh, jejunum and the ilium of the small intestine to each other and to the posterior abdominal wall. Turns out the mesentery is now considered an organ. It does have a lot of blood vessels and nerves and lymphatic structures passing through it. Um, and then the fifth fold is the mesocolon. The mesocolon helps to bind the transverse colon and the sigmoid colon to the posterior wall. So sigmoid colon and transverse colon helps to connect them to the posterior abdominal walls. Here is just a view again of a cadaver opened up. Here's the greater omentum lying on top of the uh, small intestine. Here is the falciform ligament coming out of the liver. And you can pull up the greater omentum to see the organs underneath it. And that is it for this part of the lecture.